full moon. I told you, strange things are happening. This is Karen. Okay. Cecil's here. He's on his way. Cecil. And how does it feel to be out of prison? <laughs> Dragged in. Cecil, my son, let me take a look at you. Yeah. Like it? I reckon. Just out of the background game, as uh, sporting events, as Australian, American football, local matches, you name it. And it's all down to you and your tight lips, my son. None of us has forgotten that. I couldn't have kept my gob shut for three months like those three bloody years. So. Yeah? That good? Chris, can you see that? I'm looking there. You see what that is? Two top draw tickets for Friday's football match, first division finals. And half the UK is going to be there, and the other half will give their left testicle just to sit in the arse, and they're yours, my son, because you deserve it. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a robbery. You're being robbed by Spandau Ballet. Duran Duran, you tit. Look, see? They got Simon Le Bon. Use my toothpaste. No. What? Do you have to make that noise? I'm brushing my teeth. The noise, the noise is like an animal licking its private. Ugh. You shouldn't be talking about noises. What's that supposed to mean? You farted last night on the couch when you were sleeping. You're disgusting! It was really loud. You're a child. You woke up Peter and he was upset. I'm not going to let you get to me, you know why? Why? Because according to statistics, there's a chance, a small chance, that you could be hit by a bus while looking the wrong way in traffic. A lot of tourists are. It could happen to you. Good night! Drop dead! Good 
Cleaning solvent in it? No. It's for putting toothpaste on my toothbrush last night. This morning I found my toothbrush sitting by the sink with toothpaste on it and I thought that was cute, that was nice. I can't accept this. Why not? Yeah, I put it there, but my intentions were impure. Yeah, I put the toothpaste on the toothbrush, but the plan was to brush Pete's teeth with it, then swish it around the toilet bowl a few times. But a call came in about a casino heist. I guess I got carried away about that, and I forgot. Ha-ha. It was sweet. Thank you. Doors open at nine. Come on. It's three minutes till. Be a chum. What are you looking for? What's the fella have to do to get his hands on a Duran Duran mask? Oh. Morning, babe. Thanks for letting me lie in. Mm, you're welcome, darling. You look so peaceful, we didn't have the heart to wake you. After your exertion last night, I'm surprised to see you up before noon. You set the new club swing as well. Morning, love. Morning. Just so you know, by the way, that last position is in fact illegal in England. a long one tends to fall into a routine. You should sell tickets. Well, I suppose better get going. Mm. Unless one of you ladies care to join me in the shower. Coffee will get cold, love. So, what have you two got lined up for the weekend? Well, you know, lie in, maybe catch a film. Monty, sweetheart, mm. instead of going to the cinema on Friday night, how about I cook us a really nice dinner? Oh, yeah, yeah, that would be lovely, would I? What a lovely change of pace. Great. What? He likes it when he gets the little things. You're making me look bad, mate. One mustn't stop doing the little things, like cooking dinner for your husband on a whim. Isn't she lovely? Oh, did Billings get hold of you? Billings? Mm. Some business about a few couples in our swinging group who aren't really married. No. What are you saying? Who? I thought the Hollistons. Not possible. They're too bloody miserable to not be married. <laughs> Yes. I wonder. A mystery in our midst. To be solved another time. I'm due in court. Thanks for a fabulous evening, love. Oh, my pleasure. <clears throat> oh, don't worry. It's not as if we don't know our way out. Next weekend? Lovely. I think they know. 
Obviously not. Nice couple to go in this. Yeah. <sighs> so we're on then. One, four. Friday night. Me cooking you dinner. What do you mean you actually want to do it? Any menu preferences? Monty? Hmm. Yeah, menu, fine. Uh, whatever is fine. Morning. Morning, son. Morning. Here. Hi. Are we still on for 11.30 this morning? Yes, sir. Good. Thank you. Sir. Inspector? Sir. We're going to have to reschedule the meeting this morning. Reschedule? Handful of jokers knocked over a casino, sawed off shotguns and Duran Duran masks. It was at Glass Eye Gordon Pugh's establishment. Must be the full moon. This much, so whoever did this had cockles. Yeah, and before this weekend, I'll have them all in a glass jar on Gordon's table. Duran Duran, huh? It explains what they've been up to since the 80s. Hey! Nothing, Gordon! When's he get his hearing back, anyway? A couple of weeks. Okay, well, your, your license is up to date, and the gaming board, they would only have renewed it if you had proof of insurance, so you should recoup everything that was stolen. Not before Friday, we won't. First Division finals is usually the cash cow of the season. Now we have the championship match and not one bloody customer willing to place a bet. Hey, Walt, tell them how no one will place a bet. They're afraid of losing the money. Every minute we stand here, we're losing thousands of pounds, and by the time the insurance is paid out, Walt and me be in the ground. Well, rest assured, the Yard will be putting their best foot forward. Oh, yeah? Us too. <laughs> Everybody wants Duran Duran. Everybody? Well, the guys who ordered them. And the guy this morning who came asking. Ah. So, uh, there was already somebody here this morning? Asking the same questions you are. I showed him the receipt book with the names and addresses. That's what he was after. Can we see it? No. He took it. What, the address? The whole book. Took it right outside and left with it. What about the other guys, the ones who come in here to buy the Duran Duran masks? Do you remember what they look like? Anything unusual about them? Not that I recall. What with these gaping down at me all day long, everyone seems rather ordinary. I don't suppose any of them used a check or a credit card? Paid cash on the nail. I remember, because they were 20 quid short. One of them ran across the street to the cash point and made up the difference. Decide. 
Where are my tickets? What bloody tickets? Four is. Morning, miss. Good morning, sir. Excuse me, would you mind, um... <laughs> Actually, I wanted to ask your opinion about something. My opinion? Yeah. Um, how should I put this? I'm rather curious about the, about the workings of the female mind. If a woman chooses to fix you a meal, dinner, say, what does that mean exactly? Well, if a woman chooses to fix you dinner, then there are certain factors to consider. Mm hmm Yep. Such as? Upon how far along the relationship already is. I mean, is there a mutual attraction here? Mm -hmm. Have these two shagged already? OK. Uh, yeah, what if the answer to that was yes? Well, then I'd say she's planning to take things to the next level. The next level, yeah. OK. No possibility that it's just like, you know, <laughs> dinner, like always. <laughs> <laughs> Dinner, like always, she'd be dishing out a takeout tandoori. No. She's trying to show you, a man, that she's capable of caring for you in a domestic capacity. Hey, listen, I hope you don't mind, but I did some laundry. Just colors and stuff. Yes? Well, I only had half a load, so, you know, I took what was in your hamper and put it in there. Don't mind at all. Thank you. I'll put it in the dryer when I get back from work. Oh, I already did. Thank you. Well, you know, it's the least I could do after you did the dishes. I best be off. <laughs> Good day, Inspector. Bye-bye. Yes, bye-bye. Eddie? Something strange is going on here. I can't even go into this with you because you've got no idea what is going on at my place. We should just move in together. Really? No! So what's happening? Gordon Pugh have anything for us on who knocked over the casino? Have you ever heard of a cruise missile? Uh-huh. Here is one personified. A maniac, he just went off about his tickets. That was a bloody lootly. Like a robot, a machine. Did he demand any money? He didn't seem bothered by the money. We gave him cash, he just threw it back at us. One packet hit Bertina in the eye. It's not to be trifled with, this one. Yeah, I think your friend would probably agree. How's he doing? <laughs> Doctor said he may well lose a testicle. That may be the least of his problems. Urger, the suspect in custody. Word travels fast. There's not much to see, even less to hear. The guy's out cold. What about our money? That's down in evidence, what's left of it. They divide it into five. Most of his cuts have been spent. Right. Time for a bit of unplugging. Now, listen, gentlemen, listen, if you really want to help, I suggest that you point uh, Kong and son of Kong in the direction of Cecil Barrett. Help him to make up his mind and back off before the rest of their band gets broken up. Sorry, can't do that. scared of him. I'd have to say the young lady's ready to take the relationship to the next level. To prove she's able to care for a man in a... In a, in a, in a domestic capacity? Right. Oh. You know, we, we have an arrangement, though. We have, we have a routine. I thought this was a hypothetical situation. Hmm? Really? Why did you think that? Because you told me it was. Right, right. Yeah. Well, hang the bloody hypothetical because it isn't, OK? It's me. So, why can't things remain the same, yeah? Why do we have to muck everything up by putting domesticity into the pot, yeah? And what next? Yeah? The, the pitter-patter of little pippin' feet about the flat. 
I've been holding for the warden's office. I've been holding for him for nearly 20... Wait! Do not put me back on... Warden Blakely. Yes, Nathaniel Johnson. That's got the yard, yeah. I'm just still waiting on a response to our inquiry this morning regarding Cecil Barrett. Yes. Via email. I see. Y yes, yes. That explains a great deal. Could you fax it to me? Thank you. The friends, family and the possible whereabouts of Cecil Barrett is being compiled and will be sent to this office as soon as possible. Terrific. Yes, it must be. Sir? Well, how fortunate of you to possess the ability to let things slide until somebody else picks up the slack. I've never been able to let things go that far myself. There's something in me that demands... Press? The best. There's a bar that I'm not prepared to fall beneath. But that's me. Well, I get a bar too. Yes, I'm certain of that. And I think you're spending every night there running up quite a tab because you are definitely not where you are supposed to be. On the trail of Cecil Barrett. The last time I checked, maiming a man and putting him in the hospital violates one's parole. Clearly his place is back in prison. What are you doing about it? Listen, I'm on the trail of Cecil Barrett. Cecil. Cecil. But I'm riding the horse in the direction that it's going. Good expression. But I prefer this one. American detective flies home coach. This does not look good. And you're not paid to be one step behind, detective. He's struck again. Yeah, Inspector Pippin. Yes, I am. It is. Yeah, who is this? OK, Miles, yeah, didn't uh, recognise you for a minute there. Yeah. Hello, Miss Moneypenny. <sighs> Detective. How you doing? Fine. Thank you for asking. And you? Hey, let's go. Johnson just said the drummer got drummed. AKA Roger Taylor, real name Paul Grossman. Excuse me. Looks like he didn't have Cecil's tickets either. Damn, this guy must really like soccer. Two down, three to go. So how many more have to end up like your boyfriend in there before you give up the other names? I'm not saying a word until my Paul's awake. Well, I'm sure the remaining three will appreciate your dedication. Doctor? How is he, Doctor? Will he be all right? He'll live. But he may well lose a testicle. With the sideburns, he just blew out of this relationship with the guy in the t-shirt's wife, found out it was really his sister. Did you notice something? Yes, yes, I mean, I was gonna say something. What is it? We got you the New York Times. It'll be coming every day. Thank you. Thank you. Full moon. Something strange is going on here. Morning. Morning. Yeah, that's for you. Wilde's best roommate. 
Yeah, believe me, I've had my share of roomies. None of them have rated a trophy. No, I mean it. It's for putting up with me and Pete and all the stuff you do, you know, cooking and laundry and stuff. Thanks. Yeah, I can't accept this. Why not? Remember I told you that the rent had gone up 100 quid a month? Yeah. It didn't. I printed those letters from my computer. It was a terrible thing to do, but I've been giving the money to a charity that helps find homes for lost cats. I'm sorry. Now I can add honesty to the list. You will not recognize this bird after I'm done with it. I thought you said dinner was tomorrow night. That's right. So why are we started now? Well, he needs to marinate for at least 24 hours. And between my auditions and yoga tonight, I had to start him now. Did you buy this chicken at Smithfield Market? No, the supermarket around the corner. The supermarket? Is there a problem with that? It's not a problem exactly, is it? More question of the creature's dignity, don't you think? Dignity? Monty, it's a bloody chicken. Oh, right, yeah, sure. Three weeks ago, you couldn't sleep because of the, the plight of caged birds everywhere, that they were, they were being robbed of their dignity. Oh, yeah. A documentary on Channel 4. Well, you know what? That was a month ago. Anyway, the supermarket doesn't sell free-range birds, and I was in a rush. Besides, I didn't think you cared either way. Well, obviously I do. Obviously that programme had a very profound effect on me. Honestly, Monty, either way they end up on the plate. It's not the destination, it's the journey. Hmm? It's a quality of life issue. Strutting about in the fresh air. <coughs> no, you'd rather have them cooped up day in, day out, fed and pumped up while they, the world outside passes them by. You know what? A free bird has everything to lose. Kept in a cage long enough? You won't remember your freedom when the axe falls. I think I have a fever. Is that him? Yep. Pretty good at that. Self-taught. What you got for us? <laughs> Whatever I got for you. This. You got silence. That's right. What with Cecil Barrett out, free, angry as anything, can take your names. The whole of the undersides put up the shutters. Pickpockets, grifters, counterfeit men. Everyone's keeping mum. Well, for Cecil. I gotta meet this guy. Do us a favor. Put him back inside. And let us get back to our business. Roger Taylor just woke up. Go on. Tell the inspectors what they want to hear. I give you names. I want you to call off Glass Eye Gordon Pugh and Walter that bastard. And I want very little prison time in Pentonville. Well, if you cooperate, a certain amount of leniency will come your way. Haven't I lost enough? Sorry. Right. So who are your bandmates? Now listen up, Grossman. This guy Cecil is cutting through you like a swathe of rainforest. Now I want to do something about it before anybody else has to brush their teeth with their own gonads. Now, this guy is very dangerous. I don't think you realize how lucky you are to be even talking right now. He needs to be stopped. Go on, sweetheart, tell him. You're looking for a bloke the name of Kevin. 
Start there. He's the one you're after. You got an address? Maybe we can all help each other out. Listen, I really have no idea what this is all about. I've been away the last few days. He does have the luggage to prove it. Yeah, yeah, so I see. Then again, uh, we could just as easily have caught you going as coming. I bought a round trip to Shadwell in person. You can check with the DLR ticket office. Hmm. I'm inclined to believe him. Yeah, I'm inclined to agree with you. Which would mean that he really hasn't heard because he can't be that stupid, because no one can be. <laughs> no, that is world-class stupid. And besides, he'd be sitting there with a protective athletic cup on. <laughs> heard what? That doesn't concern you, really. Oh, it's just a couple of small-time crooks ended up in the hospital with some testicular issues. Nobody I know. No, as you said, no. Yep, yep. Just make sure you mention that to the Cecil guy when he comes to call. Cecil. Yeah. Cecil. Cecil, yeah. Cecil Barrett. Very much interested in acquiring something else that was pinched in the casino robbery that you don't know anything about. Some football tickets. <laughs> but you wouldn't know anything about some football tickets, would you? Because yeah, the other two guys, the guys that you don't know, they didn't know anything about the football tickets either. Time is of the essence. Now listen, we came here to help you out. So if there's anything you think we should know, please. Please. Tell us now. Please, please tell me now. Please, please, please tell Thanks for your time. Playing in the dish. Shut up and listen. Two coppers just left my place and. Oh, I can't bloody hear. Just give us a second, all right? <laughs> what? Two coppers were here. The pool must have ratted us out. That bastard. I've got a sneaking suspicion they'll be coming around your place. Look, will you shut up? You're trying to tell me something about Paul. Go on then. What is it? Lock the door and don't answer. Not for the police. Not for anyone. Why? What, oh, what the bloody hell?
I know you're here. Good, you wanker. I've got a gun. Really? Good. I can't wait to stick it where the sun doesn't shine. You remember my face. It's not me. They're not here. The tickets, they're not here. It's the others. Honest to God, it's them. All right. All right, they're on the bloody bridge. They're on the bridge. Cheers. me so far. Now that's what you call a jump on the game, mate. But you just might have to pull that trigger to win the match. Now that would be a shame. Would it? Yes, it would. You see, on one hand, you're making my job a lot easier. I'd like to deputize you. But on the other, you're a little bit over the top. And you're a violation of your parole, so I gotta bring you in. Now, there won't be a lot of jail time unless you went to the next level with that guy in there. He'll live. Can he still have sex? Not lately. I'll make you a deal. I'll go peacefully on one condition. It's fine. Yeah. Sure, Caroline. Sure, absolutely. Yeah, don't worry. Yeah, OK. Bye. Monty? Yes? What are you doing? I'm trying not to wake you. Well, I've been awake for hours. <laughs> hey, that's good, that's good. I'm off. Oh, look, I'm glad I caught you. Yeah, really. Any other time? Got to rush. I was hoping we might take a rain check. A rain check? On dinner this evening, look, I'm really sorry, Pickle, but something came up with Caroline from class. It's this drama, trauma, ongoing saga thing, but I really feel like I have to be there for her. Anyway, that's okay, right? 
That's well, you know, <laughs> if something's come up, then something's come up. Thanks for letting me off, darling. Mwah. I was wondering, did you run the dishwasher before you left this morning? Yeah. What were you thinking putting these in there? They're mugs. Mugs go in the dishwasher. These are not mugs. They are teacups. From Brussels, they have remained pristine and unstained since they held tea at my grandmother's coming out party. Wait a sec, your grandmother's gay? Oh, very very funny. funny. Stop, Stop that! Huh? I'm Wait, warning are you! you. <laughs> hey, watch it. Those are teacups. They're not mugs. I thought the Hollistons. Not possible. They're too bloody miserable to not be married. <laughs> yes. I wonder. A mystery in our midst. To be solved another time. I'm due in court. Thanks for a fabulous evening, love. Oh, my pleasure. <clears throat> oh, don't worry. It's not as if we don't know our way out. Next weekend? Lovely. Obviously not. Nice couple, the Grovners. Yeah. <sighs> so we're on then. On? For? Friday night. Me cooking you dinner. What, you mean you actually want to do it? Any menu preferences? Monty? Hmm. Yeah, menu, fine. Uh, whatever is fine. Salon for 11.30 this morning? Yes, sir. Good. Thank you. Sir. Inspector? Sir. We're going to have to reschedule the meeting this morning. Reschedule? A handful of jokers knocked over a casino, sawed off shotguns and Duran Duran masks. It was at Glass Eye Gordon Pugh's establishment. Must be the full moon. This much that whoever did this had cockles. Yeah, and before this weekend, I'll have them all in a glass jar on Gordon's table. Duran Duran, huh? It explains what they've been up to since the 80s. Hey! Nothing, Gordon! When's he get his hearing back, anyway? A couple of weeks. 
Okay, well, your, your license is up to date, and the gaming board, they would only have renewed it if you had proof of insurance, so you should recoup everything that was stolen. Not before Friday, we won't. First Division Finals is usually the cash cow of the season. Now we have the championship match, and not one bloody customer willing to place a bet. Hey, Walt, tell them how no one will place a bet. They're afraid of losing the money. Every minute we stand there, we're losing thousands of pounds of money. He's brush sitting by the sink with toothpaste on it, and I thought, that was cute, that was nice. I can't accept this. Why not? Yeah, I put it there, but my intentions were impure. Yeah, I put the toothpaste on the toothbrush, but the plan was to brush Pete's teeth with it, then switch it around the toilet bowl a few times. But a call came in about a casino heist. I guess I got carried away about that, and I forgot. Ha ha. It was sweet. Thank you. Doors open at nine. Come on. It's three minutes till. Be a chum. What are you looking for? What's the fella have to do to get his hands on a Duran Duran mask? Oh. Morning, babe. Thanks for letting me lie in. Mm, you're welcome, darling. You look so peaceful, we didn't have the heart to wake you. After your exertion last night, I'm surprised to see you up before noon. You set the new club swing as well. Morning, love. Morning. Just so you know, by the way, that last position is in fact illegal in England. a long one tends to fall into a routine. You should sell tickets. Well, I suppose better get going. Mm. Unless one of you ladies care to join me in the shower. Coffee will get cold, love. So, what have you two got lined up for the weekend? Well, you know, lie in, maybe catch a film. Monty, sweetheart, mm. instead of going to the cinema on Friday night, how about I cook us a really nice dinner? Oh, yeah, yeah, that would be lovely, would I? What a lovely change of pace. Great. What? He likes it when he gets the little things. You're making me look bad, mate. One mustn't stop doing the little things, like cooking dinner for your husband on a whim. Isn't she lovely? Oh, did Billings get hold of you? Billings? Mm. Some business about a few couples in our swinging group who aren't really married. No. What are you saying? Who? By the time the insurance has paid out, Walt and me being the grand. Well, rest assured, the Yard will be putting their best foot forward. Oh, yeah? Us too. Everybody wants Duran Duran. Everybody? Well, the guys who ordered them, and the guy this morning who came asking. Ah. So, uh, there was already somebody here this morning? Asking the same questions you are. I showed him the receipt book with the names and addresses. That's what he was after. Can we see it? No. He took it. Well, the address. The whole book. Took it right outside and left with it. What about the other guys, the ones who came in here to buy the Duran Duran masks? Do you remember what they looked like? Anything unusual about them? Not that I recall. What with these gaping down at me all day long, everyone seems rather ordinary. I don't suppose any of them used a check or a credit card? Paid cash on the nail. I remember, because they were 20 quid short. One of them ran across the street to the cash point and made up the difference.
You decide. Where are my tickets? What bloody tickets? For is. Morning, miss. Good morning, sir. Excuse me, would you mind, um... <laughs> Actually, I wanted to ask your opinion about something. My opinion? Yeah. Um, how should I put this? I'm rather curious about the, about the workings of the female mind. If a woman chooses to fix you a meal, I told you, strange things are happening. This is Karen. OK. Cecil's here. He's on his way. Cecil. And how does it feel to be out of prison? This way, Cecil. There he is. Look what the cat dragged in. Cecil, my son, let me take a look at you. Yeah. Like it? I reckon. Just out of the back right game, as uh, sporting events, as Australian, American football, local matches, you name it. It's all down to you and your tight lips, my son. None of us has forgotten that. I couldn't have kept my gob shut for three months like those three bloody years. So? Yeah? That good? Chris, can you see that? I'm looking there. You see what that is? Two top draw tickets for Friday's football match. First division finals. And half the UK is going to be there, and the other half will give their left testicle just to sit in the arse, and they're yours, my son, because you deserve it. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a robbery. <laughs> Duran Duran, you tit. Look, see? They got Simon Le Bon. Did you use my toothpaste? No.
What? Do you have to make that noise? I'm brushing my teeth. The noise, the noise is like an animal licking its private. Ugh. You shouldn't be talking about noises. What's that supposed to mean? You farted last night on the couch when you were sleeping. You're disgusting. It was really loud. You're a child. You woke up Peter and he was upset. <laughs> I'm not going to let you get to me, you know why? Why? Because according to statistics, there's a chance, a small chance, that you could be hit by a bus while looking the wrong way in traffic. A lot of tourists are. It could happen to you. Good night. Drop dead. Cleaning solvent in it? No. It's for putting toothpaste on my toothbrush last night. This morning I found my toothbrush.